Heartbeat had been a weekday delight since its premiere, as most viewers who loved the storyline, and Take Young fans, tuned in for the ride. As the story progressed, some of us stuck with it for not only the easy comedy, but to see how all the elements would come together in the end, while hoping for a happy ending for the lead couple. But what viewers got was something akin to a cliffhanger. By the end of episode 15, I had nurtured the hope that somehow, in Hei and Wu Haiyou would find a way to be together in the end. Many things were wrong and right with this ending. Let's start with Man Wai. It seemed like the writer didn't know what to do with Man Wai in the end. They made it seem like his main role toward the end was to bring Wu Haiyou out of hiding by endangering In Hei. Man Wai is a vampire who had lived for hundreds of years. Making him subservient to humans was where it began to go wrong. I understand that times have changed, and he needs to live a good life. But given his nature, it's surprising that he took all those belittlements from Hei Wan. When he had his confrontation with Wu Haiyou, he promised to come back to kill In Hei. What happened to that promise? I had expected him to pay for his sins of imprisoning humans, and to meet his demise when going after In Hei, not that I'm complaining. Instead, he went after his former employers and died at Do Six Hands. I guess why it went that way, was to make Hei Wan realize what being a vampire really is, their true nature, and to get the information about why Do Six wants Wu Haiyou dead across to Wu Haiyou. Now, Hei Wan. Where do I begin with this character? To call what she felt for Wu Haiyou love is an insult to love. It was more like an ugly obsession. When she couldn't get the man she wanted, she resolved to use underhanded means by revealing Wu Haiyou's identity to the neighbors. How is that love? She didn't stop to think that that could put Wu Haiyou at risk. Moreover, there was no or little backstory to her. We know her as an investor, but how did she come about her wealth? What does she do for a living, to be able to initiate the redevelopment of a whole neighborhood? But what's astonishing is how she easily succumbed after her encounter with Man Wai. When she learned of Wu Haiyou's predicament, instead of feeling remorse or finding ways to keep the man she professes to love alive, she resolved to blame In Hei and asked Wu Haiyou to drain her. But what made her capitulate was witnessing Man Wai's true nature. I need to ask the writer some questions. Who's coming with me? On the other hand, I understand that it could be quite different to know something and to witness that something. What I'm trying to say is that yes, she knows that Wu Haiyou is a vampire, but had never felt threatened by that knowledge, because of Wu Haiyou's nature. But to see Man Wai's vicious side, whom, I must point out, she hadn't known was also a vampire, must have been shocking. To cut her some slack, I think she was already on the verge of bowing out, and Man Wai was the push she needed. She redeemed herself a little bit by informing Wu Haiyou of Du Six intentions. But the most important mystery that the writer failed to solve was, how she had Hei-sun's face. I understand that it could be fate playing hanky-panky, but why did she feel so drawn to Wu Haiyou and the mansion? She felt Wu Haiyou more than In Hei did. In the end, I concluded that she had Hei-sun's face, while In Hei had her essence. If that makes sense. If you recall, Toward the end of his life, Wu Haiyou realized that In Hei had been Hei Sun all these while. She came to him as she had promised in the past, and they loved each other like she'd wanted. The writer had me in my feelings with this one. I had expected waterfalls, and had even warned some of you in my last video on Heartbeat about them, but yet, I was not fully prepared. I bawled my eyes out. I had hope until the last minute. When Wu Haiyou met with Yang Nam, I was like, 
Yes, now he will tell him that there was something that he hadn't told him. When he said, there's one thing I must say to you. I leaped with joy. I was like, yes. This must be it. Just to hear Yad Yad talk about how he was more human than humans. And cats over dogs. Really? Then, when I saw Inhei drip blood onto his lips, I was like, yes. This must be it, only for the writer to leave my mouth on the floor. What was that? Did she or didn't she drip her blood on his lips? I'm still loading the bus to the writer's house, still not coming. I guess it was a way of making him put the pieces together. To come to the realization that Inhei was Hei Sun, reincarnated. One of the many things that broke my heart, was when Wu Haiol said goodbye to his buddies. And when he tenderly kissed Inhei, someone kept peeling onions in my house. Then, when he died, I swear those weren't tears coming out of my eyes, but water. Wu Haiol's humanity showed through the episodes, and in the end, he didn't only sacrifice his life for love, which he had longed for hundreds of years, but also gave due sick life. He was selfless to the end. What I understand from his words to Inhei as he said, is that this time, he will be the one to come find her in their next life. Just as Hei-sun had sacrificed herself in the past, and promised to find him, the reverse was the case this time. He sacrificed himself this time and will come to find her in his next life. Maybe, in their next life, he will be human, as he had always wanted, and will experience the love that makes the heart beat within Hei. Hope this analogy will bring peace to most of us distraught by that ending. So, Yang Nam had been the one with the gold. Sang Hei had been right. But to find out why he still had it after Wu Haiol woke up from his slumber, was tear-jerking. Wu Haiol had asked him to keep it, so he could have a reason to be with In Hei. He could have easily paid off his debt to her and lived a lavish life. But instead, he forfeited that to be with her. And gave it all to her in the end. It's good to know that his buddies were also taken care of in the end. One of the subtle, but impressive characters was, General Manager Ku. He stood by Du Sik through thick and thin, to the end. It's nice to know that the neighbors became accepting and like family to In Hei in the end. When Ju Dong El mentioned that Wu Haiyo was more human than most humans, I laughed at the look they gave each other. Because Wu Haiyo was surely more human than them. I understand that the last scene was confusing. But I think it was In Hei's vision. Just as Wu Haiyo had waited for her at the shaded oasis, she is resolved to also wait for him there. This could be her envisioning how it will be when he comes back. Just like I said earlier, I hope this analogy brings us peace with this incomprehensible ending. With this, I've decided to forgive the writer and offload the bus to his house. What do you think of the ending? Let's share our thoughts in the comments section below. And if you liked this content, give it a like, share, subscribe, and turn on your notification bell for all things wonderfully K-drama. Thanks for watching, bye.